God bless you all in the name of Jesus. What a powerful, powerful night. And for those who think this is pre-recorded, no, we are live. Yeah. I know a lot of people are asleep and um, this is spontaneous. I'm back to my spontaneous spirit. I know in a few hours we have church, but I had to come through and, and teach this because next week I want to start a whole new series. This week we've spoken a little bit about the the dark world. Next week I want to go into the light realms, especially with the elements of heaven that I spoke about. And then we'll go into deeper, amazing, beautiful things. But you have to understand that knowledge is knowledge. The Bible says, do not be ignorant of the devil's devices. So if you're ignorant of the devil, you are losing a fight. Not because you are not a Christian. You're losing a fight because you're foolish. You can never go into a fight against somebody you don't know. You are guaranteed to lose. You are not going to make it. You are definitely going to be destroyed. So it is the same way when we are walking with God. It is important to understand spiritual things. Now tonight I'm going to be speaking about discerning ancestral witchcraft witches, and occultism, or being involved in the occult. I'm going to say that again. Tonight we're going to speak about discerning ancestral witches, witchcraft, and occultism, meaning involvement of the occult. Now, if you understand the patterns of God, if you really understand the patterns of the Spirit, is that... What somebody does may not affect them, but will definitely affect the descendants. That's how spiritual things work. I may do something, but I will not live to suffer the consequences. But my children, and most likely my children's children will suffer. An example, the Bible says that a good father leaves an inheritance for who? His children's children, not his children. Why? Because your child is a direct benefactor of what you have. An example is Solomon was involved with women who brought occultism into the nation of God. He wasn't affected, but the nation suffered after him because of what he had done. Now you need to understand that there are some of you watching me right now, this hour. You are suffering not because you are a bad person. You are suffering not because you did anything, but you are suffering because there is something in the spirit that is owed by your family and their collectors are coming for you to collect. There are spirits called collectors. Uh, let me stop. Let me talk to people online. I know I didn't announce we are, you know, almost 2000 people, but... Our numbers are usually higher, but I'm just trying to give you this so that we can move on from, from this series, right? There are spirits called collectors. Collectors, their duty is to come and settle debts that are owed. Are you hearing me? They are angels of judgment. Now, when the church hears judgment, they think punishment. No. An angel who judges is an angel who comes to reward according to deeds. An example, if you served God faithfully in your life, in your generation there are angels that will be sent to deliver justice for the works that you did before God that the children should benefit from. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because you must reap from what you did. An example is... The goodness that I have done in the sight of God by His grace. My lifetime is not enough for me to get everything. I'll get a glimpse on it, of it. But my children, my children's children, and my children's children's children, some who may not even know me will still benefiting from things they don't know. Yo, y'all are asleep for me. I'm trying to go there. I'm trying to go there. So the same way we have repercussions of the spirit, we also have blessing from heaven. An example, the covenant of the Lord with Israel was fulfilled through the Lord Jesus. 
Why did God remember Israel? Because God promised that he was going to visit that house. He took thousands of years. He sent messengers and prophets, but finally he sent his only begotten son. Why? Because he promised salvation to the house of Israel. That's why Jesus said, salvation is first for the Jews and then everybody else. Why? There was a covenant that these guys are the first ones that must benefit from what Abraham did. The obedience of leaving his father and mother's house, leaving idol worship. A lot of people don't know that Abraham was an idol worshiper. Yes. It was when he was worshiping his gods that Elohim appeared to him and told him, get out of your father's house, your mother's house, and go. He told him, reject everything of your people and leave. That is why God was angry with him when he brought Lot along because Lot was not outside of the culture of those people. Are you getting what I'm saying? If Sarah was affected by the culture of their people, that God comes and says, Sarah, you shall have a child. And Sarah says, uh, God meant Haggai will give a child for my husband. Notice she used a way that her people were still doing and brought it into the promise of God, created more problems. The danger of your error is not that it will affect you, is that it will affect people after you. And I'm going to say that one more time. The danger of your mistakes, your missteps, is that it has the potential and the capacity and the destructive nature to come after your descendants. Now, every culture, I don't care if you are blue, yellow, green, purple. I don't care if you came from whatever world you came from. Every culture has a spiritual background. Every culture. If we look at the European culture, okay, Europeans, they have a Nordic heritage. The Norse were idol worshippers. In fact, people don't know the center of witchcraft, actually witches, is not Africa. It's England. It's actually England. <laughs> no, I'm telling you the truth. No, that's 100%. Do you think these are reporter movies are on accident? Portions and stuff, you think it's by accident? Because you have to understand there is a difference between witchcraft and sorcery. France, center of sorcery. Yeah. Then when you go into occultic manifestations and power, ah, India and Africa is <laughs> a whole different level. It's a whole different level. But what I'm trying to say to you is this. Every one of you comes from people who engaged with spirituality whether consciously, subconsciously, out of ignorance, there is an effect. Now, when a collector comes, he's actually not going against God. You reap what you sow. Let me give you an example. Elisha, a woman comes to him and says, My Lord, your servant was faithful to you. It was a prophet that had died. He said, your servant served you well. He died, but he left a debt. And now the collectors have come for my children to go and pay off the debt of their father. Now remember, the father was alive and he couldn't pay the debt. It means these children were going to go into slavery all their life. Maybe they were going to pay this debt when they were much older. So she went to the prophet and cried and said, I, I need to do something that my children are not taken away. But when she went to the prophet, the prophet did not bind and rebuke. The prophet found a way for the debt to be paid. Y'all are not listening to me. You see, many of you have just been taught, I bind, I rebuke, fire, 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 gada, 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 fire. Nah, it doesn't work all the time. You have to understand the systems of the spirit and what you're dealing with. Let's look at the scriptures quickly. Let's look at this quickly. 
Deuteronomy 18 from verse 9 to 12. Mm -hmm. Who's going to read for me? Amen. Madam Rice? Okay. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 18 verse 9. Mm -hmm. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Mm -hmm. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. Mm -hmm. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Now, anyone that is involved in any of these things, they are walking in what God calls abomination. There is a difference between sin and abomination. Somebody look up what abomination means. I want to get you the correct uh, description of, or, or what's the word? Not description, but what, what's definition amen. amen that word i want you to get the correct definition amen uh -huh. a thing that causes great disgust read it read it madam rice a thing that causes disgust or hatred notice whenever somebody has done an abomination in the sight of god god is disgusted and god hates it and hates the person immediately Sin produces God's mercy. Abomination produces God's hatred. Run it back. We know God has anger. <laughs> we know God's anger does not last forever. We know God is a jealous God. We know God is a loving God. We know God is a patient God. But the Bible never really talks about God's anger. It mentions it that his anger will not last for long. But, but this anger part, you have to examine what happens when somebody is in anger. Anger is a natural emotion. That's why the Bible tells you, in your anger, sin. In your anger, sin not. Meaning, even God has the emotion called anger. But the problem with this kind of anger like an example God said uh, Jacob I love Esau I hate but abomination you become disgusting to God meaning this has no part of me why does this even exist and secondly because it is not what God has made the instinct of God is anger and anger brings destruction when the children of, uh, when, when the sons, if you go to Genesis chapter 6, it speaks about the sons of God so that the daughters of men were beautiful and they descended and they started having children with them. And this was an abomination in the sight of God. It wasn't sin. It was an abomination. Then God also went into the sin, but the primary thing was like, this is an abomination. Because of that abomination, God was so angry that there is no place in the Bible that God ever said what he said in Genesis chapter 6. You know what God said? God said, I, I actually, I am sorry I created humans. God who never regrets, for the first time it's recorded, God is regretting he created humans. He said, what did I do? Why did I create this? Notice, it was the anger speaking because of disgust. We know God loves the world. We know Jesus was crucified from the foundations of the earth. Meaning God has a plan for the humanity that he has created. God has a plan for humanity that he has created. But the Lord is so disgusted that he's saying, why did I create them? God is already planning destruction of the whole earth. Including animals. Including animals. 
including animals. One sign that your family has touched what is an abomination in the sight of God, nothing prospers. Nothing prospers. Everything dies. It doesn't matter how brilliant they are in school. It doesn't matter how studied they are. It doesn't matter how punctual they are. It doesn't matter how professional they are. Everything that they do ends up in the same exact place. What is that place? Everything dies. If I was speaking to somebody, you should be typing number one right now. Uh, you, you know, let's go offline. I think the people online are asleep. Let's turn this into a private class. We are almost 2,000 people and I'm only seeing 879 likes. I don't like that. Let's get the likes up. I thought you guys were excited about having me doing these reviews. I know we had a schedule, but I, you know, some things happened and we are just flowing. Somebody say flow. flow. Yeah, you got to flow sometimes. Everything you do, it seems like nothing moves. You can't catch a break. Now nah, you are not hearing me. You just know I cannot cross this point. There is somebody who was involved with either ancestors that were in witchcraft sorcery or occultism because the only way you will continue is you must fuel the spirits that your people worked with if you do not fuel them they can't let you move forward it's a fact it's a hundred percent fact oh you know i just went to get my palm read oh i just went to you know to just get a reading i just went to hear about this i just took my hair i just took my this you didn't just mess you up. You messed a lot of people that will come out of you. That's good. Help us, Lord. Or my family used to just worship some idols. Or maybe they just did a little voodoo. I mean, it's not even that serious. Oh, we just did this astral stuff, you know, looking at plants. Ha! Ah, every, the primary sign. Let me give you an example. Joseph goes to Egypt as a slave. He is in Potiphar's house. The first thing that distinguished Joseph from everyone else, what was it? Everything he touched prospered. A slave is prospering. You are free and you're not prospering. Something is wrong. Remember, Joseph has no experience about all these things. He came straight from his father's house. Joseph was a snitch. <laughs> his father would use him because he would tell the truth of what his brothers were doing. Yeah. So his brothers hated him because, my guy, you're a snitch. Yeah. Why you always got to tell pops what's going on? Why can't you just like... You know, be one of the boys. But his hands were so pure that whatsoever he was involved with prospered. The four Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel, were taken into Babylon. I know some have spoken about eunuchs. These guys were eunuchs. They were castrated. Yes. They cut their juevos off. They couldn't reproduce. They were, they were eunuchs. Do you, have you ever heard Daniel having a wife or a child? Never. They were castrated because that was the art of war. If I take you to work for me, my goal is to cut off your descendants that they don't come and avenge. 
So what they did was they castrated them. They made them eunuchs. Are you hearing me? Yes. They made them what? Eunuchs. Barrenness. Barrenness is a sign somebody was involved in the occult in your bloodline. And they do not want anyone else to be born that will undo what they bound whoever that came before you to do. I'm done with you, you people. You're not, you're not hearing me. I don't know how many people in this church have received miracle babies. Countless. I, I mean, from years like uh, a few years, uh, uh, last, sometime last year, a young boy that was almost nine years old. I prophesied to the mother that was married for 12 years, couldn't have children. I touched her, she fell down and said, woman, go buy clothes now. You're going to have a son, go get clothes now. Three months later, she was pregnant. A few months later, her husband who did not believe, they brought the boy to church as a baby. He came as a grown little boy. And I said, anything he needs for school, I'll pay for it. It was a product of prophecy. Why? Somebody was involved in witchcraft. The womb was closed. Why? Because those spirits do not want fruitfulness. They are counterproductive. You think about it. Somebody out there careless are giving back to children back to back to back to back to back. You, you are in church. Rabba, shata, God, you are struggling to have a baby. Something is wrong. Tonight after this life, babies will come. Those who are believing for children, you will have them. Uh, let me show you an example of what I mean. Yeah. Moses is born in the house of Egypt. Okay? Their families were under, were under bondage. When Moses was born, what was the first instinct of the magicians of the city? Kill all the children. Murder descendants. When Jesus was born, what was the instinct of the magicians and the wizard? Kill the children. Why? Because the, 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 the children of Israel were under bondage and they were under covenant because of Joseph. The Egyptians broke the covenant because they forgot about Joseph. So the spirit that is in charge enslaved them. And any child that is to be born that will bring deliverance must be killed because they are now under contract to be in bondage for the rest of their lives. The reason why you are struggling with barrenness or you're fighting with barrenness is that the devil does not want a deliverer to come out of you. Amen. That will break the covenant. Ah. I feel like online people are clapping better. I can hear them more than people in here. I'm about to finish because we got church in the morning. We got church in the morning. Set us free. Set us free. So number one, fruitfulness is gone. Anything you touch doesn't work. Number two, barrenness. If you investigate and you start noticing barrenness in the family, it, has, it is a telltale. It is a what? That somebody was involved with something. Number three. Premature death. Or what we call untimely death. Are you hearing me? Yes. Untimely death. Untimely death is a death that was not expected. Premature death is you died before your time. Untimely death is like, we didn't expect this. You may be 80 years old, 90 years old. You are good all of a sudden, you're gone. That's an untimely death. 
A premature death is that you are rising, getting somewhere, and you just die. When Dre sat here, Dre, put the microphone on him. Put the microphone on him. Let me do one or two things real quick. Dre is my son. Yes. I don't prophesy to my children. This is true. I don't prophesy to my children. But I'm going to prophesy to you so you can comfort your mother. Amen. Thank you, Papa. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. There is a problem that just happened at home. Mm -hmm. Okay. I saw a man that just died. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what happened to this man is that his background, he comes from a Masonic background. Mm -hmm. Okay. His father's father and his uncles, one called Joshua, they were involved in Freemasonry, in the brotherhood stuff. Mm. When this man started with God, and then he also entered into that religious kind of black supremacy. He became yes. an Israel, Hebrew yes. Israelite. Yes, this is true. Huh? This is true. I saw the man walking. I don't know why he was walking in like a construction site. I don't know what he was doing in this mm. place. I don't know if he did construction or what he did. But he was dealing in like some construction. I don't know exactly what he was doing. Mm. He walked and I saw him stepping on a nail. Mm -hmm. And he stepped on the left foot. Mm -hmm. He was poked with a nail. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, he created a fungus kind of weird thing that turned into diabetes or what it is. Yes. They amputated yes. the guy's legs. Yes, yeah. prophesied. His this body is true. just was cut off. Yes, this, this is, is true. true. You know what this I'm telling you? This is true. Very true. Very true. They amputated his legs. All of a sudden, the man just untimely just dies. Yes, this is true. This, this didn't true. happen too long. This is last this week. This was just this week. Yeah. <laughs> Prophesy. So, so, so. Now watch this. Why am I telling you this? Because you now you know. You will know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. For the sake of your mother. Now, yes. he's not your father by blood. Are you hearing me? Yes. But because he was with your mother, it could affect you for the sake of your mother. So we need to fix that. Amen. Are you hearing me? Yes. We need to fix that. He was in a sect called House of Benjamin. Yes. That's what the angel of the Lord told yes. me. Yes. Yes. So we need to pray for him. Yes. That God, we need to not, not pray for him, but break the curse Amen. of the enemy. Did he have children with your mom or no? No. Okay. Pray. Right. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Now we can pray for mama's deliverance and yes. God to heal mama's heart. Amen. So that Amen. mama can be fine. Amen. Amen. Okay. But, but look at this. Why did I do that? I hate prophesying to my children. Because you think I know. Me and you haven't spoken. You never told me anything about this. I'm no. just telling you this now. This is true. Here's the issue now. Untimely death. Untimely death. It means there was somebody that prepared a snare. Because the natural way of a believer dying is this. God will satisfy you with what? Long life. What does it mean to be satisfied by long life? Long life means I am fulfilled in my life. An example, the Lord Jesus died when he was 33 years and a half and he rose again. But he lived a full life. He accomplished his mission. A full life is when you have done what you are supposed to do and you fulfill it. Premature death is that you are about to finish what you started and you die. Untimely death is you are living life, you are not fulfilling anything. But everything is going well, all of a sudden you are just cut off. It's like what happened? It wasn't anticipated, it wasn't planned. Because the death of a saint, usually God will put it in your heart. You start to put your house in order. Before my father departed, the Lord had spoken to me. I was only eight. I saw a vision of everything that was going to happen to my father. But this is what my father did on the day he was going to die. He took my older brother Richie and told him, you need to understand, you being firstborn, you are literally their, bro you are, you are their father. If anything happens to me, I don't know why I'm saying this. You are in charge of them. Richie started to cry. He said, don't cry. I raised you the way I raised you because you are the firstborn. Look after them in case anything happens. I don't know why. And I remember my father kneeling in the bedroom praying. My father always knelt 
and lifted his hands and spoke to God. And while he was kneeling and praying, the Lord is my witness. While he was kneeling and praying, I saw a demonic spirit. I will never forget this in my life. I saw a demonic spirit attempting to grab him behind him. Only my family knows this. I'm just sharing it with you. I saw a spirit trying to come across to him, but it's held back. And this spirit held, um, held a sharp thing that looked like a blade. To be honest with you, the only way I can describe this spirit is like a grim reaper. Yeah. It wasn't exactly, it was a shadow figure, but I could explain it like a grim reaper. Yeah. I saw this spirit attempting, but it could not. It was so vivid to me because it wasn't a vision, a dream. While my father was praying this up and then my father finished praying, he went to the living room and he went to, uh, to talk to some people. I got so afraid, I ran out of the bedroom and I went and I sat with him and I held him. He told me, are you okay? I said, yes, Papa, I'm fine. He just held me and I sat with him because I was, I was his, his baby, I'm junior. So I was with him. But what I saw scared me. God will always have you Put your things in order. That is the death of a saint. Because you must leave an inheritance. You can't leave an inheritance if you go like a chicken. Are you all learning something? Are you sure you're learning something? YouTube, if you're learning something, type number one, type number one, type number one. Let me see. Let me see if you're learning something. And then Esther, I can't see the comments. And I can't see how many people are on there. Okay. Okay, 2,600, not bad. Let's get the likes up. I know people watch this later, but... Are, are you get, guys getting what I'm trying to say? <laughs> Untimely death and premature death are usually a sign that somebody was involved in especially in the occult in the occult and they doubled in witchcraft it may not be you this will be people before you if you look at a pattern nobody crosses this age they just die nobody crosses this age they just die if somebody tries to go abroad something happens if somebody tries to ah death 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 Somebody was involved with something. Number four. Number what? Four. The spirit of confusion that you don't have direction in life is a sign there are spirits derailing you because of who was involved in what they were doing. The spirit of confusion is a sign somebody was involved in the occult. The children of Israel leave the presence of God. They build an idol before God. What happened to them? They couldn't find their way out of the wilderness. Their journey was to take a few weeks to get to the promised land. They took 40 years in the same exact place. But notice this. They could not tell that they are in the same place. Uh, I'm done. Teach, Papa. Teach. And the Bible says they were going around the same mountain. Now, people think geographically it meant they were actually going around the same mountain. No. Remember, a mountain means an obstacle. Okay? That's why Jesus said, whoever shall speak to this mountain and tell it to remove itself. So they were thinking they were dodging the mountain, but they were going around the same what? Mountain. Notice the only time they could pass the mountain is when the generation of those people who dealt with a golden calf died. Is when they could make it to the promised land after 40 years. You all ain't listening to me. Uh, this one we need to delete. This one needs spirit of delete. Where's Musa? Musa will decide for me. Musa. Big Moose. 
I agree, Musa. Uh, Musa said, let's do it. Let's delete, right? What say you, Musa? One hour grace, Papa. One hour grace. Listen, what I'm giving you are matrix. These are real things. I'm afraid to talk. <laughs> Bring deliverance. Bring deliverance. <laughs> <laughs> so hear me by the Spirit of God. Hear me by the Spirit of God. Uh uh. Are you prophesying now? So hear me by the Spirit of God. I'm saying this to open your eyes. These are real things. It's a sign. Somebody touched something. The lack of direction. How can somebody in the world has never prayed, never fasted, know what to do with their life? You are in the presence of God praying, Holy Spirit, guide me, and you have no guidance. God, in fact, is the one that is guaranteeing my word is a lamp unto your feet, and you can't find your way. It's a big old problem. This affects even men and women of God. You see ministries, instead of knowing their path before God, they start emulating other ministry and nothing grows. Yeah. So it becomes like a collaboration like music. Me and you, let's collaborate so that we can have a conference. Nothing wrong with that, but they try to build off each other like the world. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. An example is this. Look at me. I don't collaborate with anyone. I only do service if my father calls me, I go and do what my father needs me to do. That's no collaboration. That's family. I don't preach for people. The only man of God outside of our family that I've preached for, actually there are two. Pastor Jamal Brandt and my big brother, Apostle Omar. That's it. Not because of money. The only man of God that has ever paid me and not because I demanded, he found a way to give it to me. That I was looking through my account one day, I said, where did this 80 something thousand come from? It was Pastor Jamal Brand. I don't need anybody's money. I'm good. But it touched me that I did it out of love, but he showed an appreciation of what God has given me, right? So I'm trying to explain this to you so that it can be deposited in your spirit to know that these things is true. The lack of direction, it means an altar was raised in your family and it has brought confusion. Every time Abraham was lost in the wilderness, do you know what he did? He went back to the altar he had built and he would receive direction. If you can't find direction, then there is the wrong altar that has been raised. I'm going to give you two more and we'll finish for tonight. Misfortune. Or what people call bad luck. Misfortune. Or what people call bad luck. That's why you find the world says, ah, that person is lucky. That person's always lucky. Things always work out for them. But you, Radabashata, Kilama Soto, Brote Kata Kata, Grrr, poo, 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 poo. You have all manner of tongues. Zegedegede. Today, I wish my Auntie Benz was here. I was watching, uh, Prophet EJ sent me a video. Prophet EJ is wicked. Mm, he sent me a video. I actually responded to him and I said, Man of God. You, you, have, you, you, you are not right. You know, he will send me some videos and we send each other videos that are just interesting. So he sent me a video. 
<laughs> I don't know if I should snitch. Let me let me try and call him. He's probably asleep preparing for church. He sent me a video. And I was with the Apostle Innocent. And the video said, so and so man of God groaning in the spirit. <laughs> no, it said groaning in the spirit. But when I started playing the video, <laughs> I didn't hear groaning of the spirit. Everything was in English. <laughs> the Bible says, uh, the spirit helps us to pray with groanings that words cannot what? Utter. So the man was, go, do, go. <laughs> Holy ghost. Ah, <laughs> this is not groaning. <laughs> so Apostle, Apostle Innocent looked at me and he said, I understand him. That's not groaning. <laughs> oh, Christians, may the Lord deliver us, please. But, but what I'm trying to say is this. With all these tongues, with all these prayers, you're still suffering misfortune. Yet the Bible says, you are what? Blessed. You don't depend on luck. Ooh, I got to say that again. I am not lucky. I am what? Now you got to say that with your chest. I am not lucky. I am what? We are blessed. Do you know what it means to be blessed? Luck is left up to chance. Blessing is fortified by somebody who has the power to make your path straight and prosperous. So when you are blessed, there is no failing. When you are lucky, your luck may fail and will fail. But blessing, Remember, the blessing of God also has protection. I'll give you an example. If you look at the book of Job, the devil, the, the Bible begins by describing the blessings of Job. He says, Job at this, Job at that, Job at this, Job at that. Then he went into the spiritual world when angels and the devil came to meet with God to discuss certain matters and the devil came along. And God asked the devil, where have you been? He said, you know, I've been roaming the earth. You know my, how I do my thing. God said, okay. Did you see Job? He said, yeah, I saw Job. Does he love you for nothing? Have you not blessed him and put a what? Edge of protection around him. Because when you are blessed, protection comes with it. That is why the Bible says, the blessing of the Lord maketh what? And adds no what? Because it's protected. Misfortune in relationships. Rape in the family. Abuse in the family. Physical abuse. It's like blood is always shed. Violence. It's a sign somebody tampered with something. Somebody touched something. You give yourself 100% to somebody. That person will just use you and then use other people and then spit you up. And then you're like, but I gave everything. You said this. It's a sign somebody tampered with something. Instability in relationships. Somebody tampered with something. Because if a marriage is a covenant between man and woman and God, no demon should have a place. If a demon has a place, it means that union is still questionable in the spirit. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I'm saying. There is a problem. How are demons finding a way into a marriage? I don't know how many times I've delivered husbands and wife from spiritual husband and spiritual wife. How do you have spiritual husband and spiritual wife when you did a wedding in church and the man of God prayed for you? Something was done. You had a physical wedding, not a spiritual one. Help us. Do you know spiritual husbands don't just possess you? Spiritual husbands are fulfilling a mandate in your family. 
Spiritual husbands are always generational. I have never encountered a spiritual husband that just came to one person. He usually would have been with their mother's mother, auntie. After that one passes away, to find somebody else. It is a generational spirit that you people, every woman is his wife. And vice versa for men. Somebody touched something. I'll say it again. Somebody touched something. Somebody was messing with something. Are you guys here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. Are you sure you can hear me? Yes. Somebody tempered with something. The last one I will give you is this. <laughs> Let's, let's read the scripture. <laughs> this is na Uncle Isaiah. Isaiah 60 from verse 1. Isaiah 60 from verse number 1. Isaiah 60. From verse numero uno. Amen. Is somebody, somebody here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. Are you sure you're here? Yes. Let's read it. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, mm -hmm. and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, mm -hmm. and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Mm -hmm. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, mm -hmm. and kings to thy brightness of thy rising. Mm -hmm. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see, all they gather themselves together. Mm -hmm. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Mm -hmm. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, mm -hmm. because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Oh, abundance. If God has broken the curse, the sign that you are outside of the bondage of ancestral tampering with evil and wicked spirit, abundance begins to come. <laughs> Money begins to flow. Keep reading. Watch. Watch this. Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Mm -hmm. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Notice what was fighting you begins to work for you. What was supposed to prosper others begins to prosper you. Not because you worked. Yeah. Yes. There is a spiritual shift. Ah. Yeah. The light of God has risen upon you. Something changes. When the children, hold on, we are going to continue. When the children of Israel were leaving Egypt... How did they leave Egypt? God judged all the gods of Egypt because those were the spirits that were holding them. He blotted out the sun for three days and three nights. The supreme God, the supreme God of the Egyptian is called Ra. Ra is the sun God. So, Jesus, so Moses proved Ra has no power. I will silence him for three days. There was darkness over all of Egypt except Goshen. Are you hearing this? Then their last God that this one is the one that takes you to the gates where you are weighed. Is called Anubis. Anubis is now the God of the underworld. He's the one that ferries people through the underworld. Moses killed the children of Israel. Before they could kill. Uh, Moses killed the children of the Egyptians. Before they could kill the children of Israel. God sent an angel to cut them off. To show them Anubis has no power here. So even Anubis was put to shame. 
The mummy water spirits they were worshipping in the Nile. He turned the Nile into blood. Let me explain to you why he turned the water into blood. Do you guys want to really know? I don't know if I should say this one. This one is deep. Teach us. This one is deep. Let me tell you why. If you understand anything spiritual, even biblically, blood defiles. And blood neutralizes things. If a woman was in a cycle and she touched a prophet or a man of God, that man of God was defiled. It would take seven days for him to be cleansed. When a woman had childbirth, she had to go through cleansing because of the blood. When a woman was on a cycle, she had to be removed from the public. Until she's cleansed, then she can rejoin people. It has a real spiritual effect. This is real. If the Bible is saying it is true, I'm just telling you the honest truth of God. When the Lord Jesus resurrected, Mary Magdalene was one of the women that were there. Jesus appeared and she thought he was a gardener. And she said, where is my Lord? Where is my Lord? Where have you taken him? He said, Mary. She, was, she didn't recognize the voice. She kept crying and she almost touched him. She said, Mary. He, Jesus said, Mary. He said, Rabbi. He said, Mary, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended. Because Mary was on a cycle. If she had touched him, she had the power to defile. (laughs) You're not hearing me. Jesus forbade her from touching him. Mary, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father. And we know that the spirit of the Lord Jesus was on earth for 40 days before he ascended. So Mary Magdalene or Mary was not allowed to touch him. But Jesus that evening appears to the disciples. And he tells Thomas, Thomas, touch me. (laughs) Put your finger in there. See that indeed it is me. Thomas can touch. Mary can touch. Mary believes his reason. Thomas doesn't believe but he can touch. It's very serious. It's very serious. Are you hearing me? It is very what? Serious. If you look at like occultic groups, like Freemasons, why do you think Masonic groups don't have women? Mm. Women are not allowed in their temple. Mm. Or any occultic group, it's either, it's always secluded. Men and women it's never men and women together no you can find that with witchcraft and sorcery but if we are talking because you have to remember the highest level of spirituality in the dark realm is the occultic realm and some people don't know what the occult mean the word occult means secret but what do the people in the occult seek out to do they seek out knowledge of the spirit in order to control spirits People in the occult are trying to find ways to control spirits. They attempt to capture them and to use them for their will. That's what the occult really is. If you want, you can do research and you will know what I'm telling you to be true. Musa, I think I went too deep. We are definitely deleting. We are definitely deleting, but let me continue. So, so I, is somebody hearing me? Yes. Blood is a dangerous thing. And it's a powerful thing. If it is dead blood, it will kill everything it touches. Are you getting it? Yes. That's why when women were on their cycle, that blood is not useful. It has no life. It's dead blood. It's considered unclean. When an animal is killed, the Bible says don't drink the blood. Make sure you drain the blood before you consume that animal. Don't take blood because life is in the blood. Meaning that whatever that person was doing, that blood will transfer to you, even if it is an animal. 
Let's say an animal was used in a ritual. It belonged to somebody that was in a ritual. You partake of it. You have become a part of that. That is why Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel refused to eat from the king's table. Why? If they partook of it, they became part of whatever that animal was done with. That is why when God destroyed the earth in the time of Noah, he even killed animals. Because some were used for certain things. And God could not accept it. God cannot accept a sacrifice with a blemish. Is somebody hearing me? Moses curses the water. Said nobody would drink from this water. The water turns into blood. Neutralizes everything. In the, even fishes died. Everything was bad. And this is the crazy thing. Even jars of water they had at home. That they tried to spare. All of it turned into blood. The only place there was no blood it was in Goshen. This was the blood of the people they had killed. Uh -huh. Uh, <laughs> everyone they had murdered that was their blood these are spiritual things uh, Musa we are definitely deleting this one so hear me by the spirit of God hear me by the spirit of God hear me by the spirit of God blood is very very dangerous and blood is very powerful. That is why we are not redeemed by the word of God. We are redeemed by the blood of the son of God. So notice, blood has power to do what words can't do. Say it again, say it again. Blood has the power to do things that words can't do. If right now you are busy, and a witch goes and takes blood and does this, and you don't know how to function in the blood of the lamb, you are destroyed. 100%. Huh? How do I, how do I function? Uh, we are getting there, oh God. Take it easy. <laughs> okay. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, you are the best. That's why I love you. <laughs> but, but, but look at this. First of all, identify these things. That is why the Bible says in, I believe, Revelation 5, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So there are certain things you can't overcome unless blood is involved. It's a fact. That is why you find that when a people died for a nation for their freedom, and that generation that comes abuses it, that nation will be judged because somebody's blood was sacrificed for you and you abuse it. You don't understand the value of blood. There's more I can go into. No, there is more I can go into. I'll give you one more. You can't, you can't hold on to anything. Money comes and goes. It's like the moment you touch money, it goes. Something has to be taken care of. You get money, you think you have these plans, all of a sudden that money just... It's like, why is just, do I have a basket instead of a, of a bucket that can collect water? Why is it that things are just going through? Yeah. Help, us. Help us. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a big problem. Keep reading Isaiah 61. I'm about to finish. Because we have church in how long? <laughs> it's 11 we have people start lining up at 5 no it's true people start lining out outside at 5 
That's true. So let's give people a chance. Now they are watching. They have to be in the morning. It's too much. Okay, go, go, go for it. Isaiah 60, starting in verse 6. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. Mm. The Keep dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. Notice, camel was the Lamborghini. It was the, was the, not Lamborghini. It was the, it was the Rolls Royce of the day. True. Horses were the Lamborghini. That's why we say horsepower. Uh, keep going. They will come. You won't fight. They will come. These things will just follow you. Keep going. They shall bring gold and incense. They will bring what? Gold and incense. Why gold and incense? Gold always goes with incense. You can't have gold without incense, spiritually. <laughs> we'll talk about this, gold and incense. Not today. When the Magi came to Jesus, what did they present to him? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. What? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold and incense. <laughs> you can't truly worship without gold. Listen. I'm telling you, I know you won't understand this. Some people will think I'm just talking. This is a spiritual fact. When the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, God told them after the spirits of Egypt were judged, God told them, go to your neighbor and tell them to lend you gold. Yeah. He didn't say lend you silver. Tell them you want gold and you will give it back. But obviously they were not getting it back. So my question for you is God a liar. They were being given restitution. We worked all these years, we didn't get paid. Give me gold. We are going to bring it back. So they gave them gold, gave them gold, gave them gold. And why did God ask them for gold? Because this gold was supposed to be for the ark. This gold was supposed to be part of their worship before God. The reason why God was displeased is that when he gave them gold that was supposed to be part of their worship before God, they created a golden calf. You see, God blesses you. Instead of taking the portion of God's blessing to honor God, you go and do your own thing and you build a God and then you expect God to bless you. Mm. Set us free. Set us free. You are supposed to worship the lamb. You go and worship a goat. They call him Batha who? Baphomet? Yeah? Yeah. Ah, we need to deliver you. Especially you are Asian. <laughs> uh, Uncle Dino, we need to pray for you. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uncle Dino is knowledgeable. So, so capture this. Capture this by the Spirit of God. Are you here still? Keep reading, listen. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall... Notice, these people will show off the praises of the Lord by bringing you gold and incense. Yes. Not hallelujah, amen. Yes. Some people are bringing you hallelujah and amen, and it's not praises of God. Yes. <laughs> now, I'm being, I'm being serious. Praise God, praise God. But this praise God doesn't bring any change. We are not seeing any praises. But if gold and incense comes, you will say, Harabashat. You have the groanings of that prophet. Go, do, 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 do. Holy Ghost. <laughs> if you want to see genuine prayer come out of a man or a woman of God, bless them. I remember my father was giving, I hope he won't be angry me mentioning this, but... He was with my spiritual grandfather, my father and my grandfather. Listen, my tithe is crazy. Ah, my tithe game. I thank God that I'm faithful with my tithe. Yeah. I don't even look at it because if I look at it, I may backslide. <laughs> That's how deep it is. I stopped looking long ago. Yeah. I just say, yeah, just remove it. This is our tithe in the house, not the church's tithe, my own. I'm not talking 10,000, no, I'm talking in the hundreds of thousands, my own, for my ventures and stuff. No, this is true before the Lord. I won't tell you what is not true. Amen. Oh, I tithe just like you. Amen. I can't tithe to the church because the church is my organization. Yes. I have to give somewhere else, and this is not including the seeds and the things that I do. Yes. He was, uh, I'm beginning a new year, this and this and this. 
He took out a check. The check was a million dollars. God is my witness. Gave it to Bishop. Bishop opened it like this. He closed it. God! (laughs) Ah, The blessing my father received that day. Not because my bishop is not wealthy. My bishop is very wealthy. A million means nothing. But it is the act that you may demand a blessing. The Bible says it like this. Jacob said, uh, uh, um, Isaac said to his son Esau, go and find me game. Cook it the way I love that my soul may bless you. There is something you need to do to a man or a woman of God. Whether, and I'm not only talking about financially. You have to know what they like that when you do it, they are compelled. Everything inside of them wants to bless you. Amen. Some of you want the blessing of God on some homie or some, some, some friendship or, or what is the word? Um, not, uh, you th- uh, not deserve, but what is the word? Entitlement. I've been around, so I'm entitled. No, it doesn't work. Spirit. Prophet Lovi is different from Lovi. Lovi is a man. Elias is the prophet. Elias doesn't, it's, even Andrew is not Elias' son, unless Andrew does what Elias wants. Andrew is Lovi's son. Lovi will give him ideas and ways to walk with God that he may move Elias. To move with him. That's how my son is receiving impartation from me. My son can prophesy and I don't even let him prophesy much. I'm grooming him. If you haven't noticed, he spends more time with me than ever before. Why? There is something that is happening to him. Why? He is learning to serve the prophet, not his father. Are you getting this? So there are things I can begin to give him and to pour into him because my soul is compelled. My spirit is saying, do this. It's different. Making sense? Please continue before I go ahead of myself. This is fun actually. This is why I like spontaneous live streams. Even though we are deleting it. Continue. Continue. I'm about to finish. Continue. Verse 7. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. Mm-hmm. The rams of Naboth shall minister unto thee. Mm-hmm. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar. Mm-hmm. And I will glorify the house of my glory. Mm-hmm. Who are these that fly as a cloud and mm-hmm. as the doves to their windows? Mm-hmm. Surely the isles shall wait for me mm-hmm. and the ships of Tarshish first. Mm-hmm. They bring thy sons from far. Do you notice everything is just talking about wealth? Nothing spiritual. But it is saying those wealth are actually a result of something spiritual. So if anybody tells you walking with God, you don't need to have silver and gold, they are lying to you. They go together. I do too. Keep going. Uh Their silver and their gold with them Mm -hmm. unto the name of the Lord thy God Mm -hmm. and to the Holy One of Israel because he hath glorified thee. Mm -hmm. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls Mm -hmm. and their king shall minister unto thee. Mm -hmm. For in my wrath I smote thee, Mm -hmm. but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. Mm -hmm. They shall not be shut day or night. Notice you'll be prospering, you sleep, you awake, you're just prospering. Keep going. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. You hear that so that people can bring. People are just bringing. They don't know. May people bring things to you. I receive. Keep keep going. Keep going. That their kings may be brought. Mm -hmm. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Notice God now will put a threat out. Anyone who opposes you is going down. I'm just going to throw this out there. Have you noticed people who are talking about me have no traction anymore? Are you notice how quiet it's been? They have no people used to watch them. People are not watching them like they used to anymore. It's gone crickets. Keep going. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Mm-hmm. The glory of Lebanon shall come up 
come unto thee, mm -hmm. the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. This is all material. Nothing is spiritual here. Keep going. And I will play and I will make the place of my feet glorious. Mm -hmm. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. <laughs> People come and say, I'm sorry, not spiritually, physically. Keep going. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down. At Even the haters will come and recognize. Keep going. Shall bow d themselves down at the soles of thy feet. Uh -huh. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, uh -huh. the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Notice your ha haters will say, surely God is with you. Keep going. Keep Whereas going. thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee. I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Mm -hmm. Notice, what will be done will be for generations. Amen. Do you see that? It is continuous, not to that group of people, generations. Keep going. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, mm. and shalt suck the breasts of kings. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am the Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Notice. You get the nutrients. What makes nations, you partake of it. Amen. What makes them powerful, you will share in it. Amen. Keep going. Watch this. For brass, I will bring gold. Mm -hmm. And for iron, I will bring silver. Notice, God is upgrading all the precious stones. Amen. If it was today, for 10,000, I'll give you hundreds of thousands. For hundreds of thousands, I'll give you millions. For millions, I'll give you billions. For billions, I'll give you what? Trillions. Keep going. And for wood brass and for stones iron, mm. I will also make thy officers peace mm. and thine exactors righteousness. Notice, there will be a sense of calm around you. No chaos. Yeah. Calm. Anyone that has been around me, I just like good vibes. If you bring any kind of vibe that is off, you are deleted from my group. Instantly. Good vibes only, 2024. Amen. Keep going. Uh -huh. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Violence shall not be heard no more in your, in your group. There will be no more violence. There will be no unnecessary strife. Keep going. Wasting nor destruction within thy borders. There will be no wasting, no destruction. There will be no unnecessary destruction. Keep going. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation mm. and thy gates praise. When people come through your walls, they have been saved. And those who come through your gates, they will be praising. Salvation and praise will be your borders. Amen. Keep going. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Mm -hmm. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. You will not depend on what others depend on for your life to be good. Keep going. But the Lord shall be unto thee an mm. everlasting light, uh -huh. and thy God thy glory. Mm -hmm. Thy sun shall no more go down, mm -hmm. neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. You see, I always say when people say, it is your season to be famous, I always tell them, I don't operate with season. Me, the season is my lifetime. Amen. People think, oh, it's your season to be known. No, 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 no. I always stop them. Say, my season is my lifetime. It's not, I am not, you see, there are people who are popular yeah. for a season. Yeah. But greatness is for a lifetime. <laughs> Popularity is for a season. But greatness is for a lifetime. May you become great in the name of Jesus. Receive. Woo. Keep going. Thy sun shall no more go down, mm -hmm. neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. Mm -hmm. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, mm -hmm. and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. Notice the days of crying will be what? Forgotten. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Mm -hmm. They shall inherit the land forever. Mm -hmm. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, mm -hmm. that I may be glorified. Mm -hmm. A little one shall become a thousand, mm -hmm. and a small one a strong nation. Notice you start to multiply, producing people of quality. Keep going. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. I will hasten it. I will do it quickly. Now you guys didn't hear me. Clap your hands if you believe it. Hallelujah. This is a sign and a picture of a delivered person. Yeah. 
that is the sign and the picture of a delivered person. Don't desire the appearance of godliness. Desire genuine what? Godliness. Don't desire appearance. For what? What does that help you with? It is midnight in, 30, in 29 minutes. It will be midnight in 29 minutes. You have to understand um, the watch of the day, right? Midnight is the time for the angel of deliverance only comes at this hour. If you look at people who are delivered, they were always delivered in the middle of the night by the angel of the Lord. This is the hour of deliverance. I will see. Let me talk to some people online. I will see. Your clapping is not good for Jesus. Clap for the Lord Jesus like you mean it. Shake your neighbor. Say, neighbor. This is your hour of deliverance. This is your hour of deliverance. I can't hear you say neighbor. neighbor. This is your hour of deliverance. Your hour of deliverance. Say it with everything that is in you. Say neighbor. neighbor. This is your hour of deliverance. This is your hour of deliverance. Listen, I love to teach where it's fun, it's enjoyable. I, I, like, I love, that's just me. But don't take the words I'm telling you lightly. They're extremely profound. Mama, come, you with the bandana, come. I want to tell you something in your ear. Yeah, 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 you mama. Yeah, come, come. I want to tell you something in your ear. Come close, come close. I don't want them to hear. Amen. Amen. God is going to help you to break that mama. Amen. Okay. Now I saw two young boys also. That girl. There was two young brothers. I don't know if the two young brothers. Huh? Huh? One was the son. There are two of them. I'm seeing two young boys. We need to pray sincerely because their life is also in danger. Are you hearing me, Mama? God is using you to deliver them. Amen. Mm. Amen. God is using you to deliver them. This is a serious thing. Amen. So I see, where are you from, Mama? South Africa, but born in Zimbabwe. Oh, you are, you are South African Zimbabwe? Yes. Zimbabwe? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so God is using you to break this thing. Amen. Okay? Thank you. God is using you to break these things because this is how I saw it and it moved me. That's why I called you. Amen. Okay? This was in 2018. Amen. 2018. That's this right. was in June. That's right. In June. That's right. I saw a young girl die. Mm -hmm. And it was very strange how this woman died because I saw a fatality that was very, very ugly. Yes. 
accident, boom, bang, boom, dead. Yes. I looked for the father, didn't see him. Yes. I was wondering, where is this man? He passed on. The father passed on. Yes. But before he passed on, nobody knew where he was. Yeah. He just left. We say he passed on because we don't know where he is. Prophesy. <laughs> 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 I'm not even prophesying. I'm just uh, touching. The mother also died. Yes. The mother is not alive. Yes. So now there's this spirit that is just permeating around. That's correct. Permeating around. That's right. God said you are going to break it. And even the spirit of HIV. Yes. You are going to break it because it's there also. Amen. This was for you. Thank you, Papa. Now, I'm not really in the feeling of, uh, I'm not in the prophetic vibes. Amen. But this one really moved me because I felt sorry. Amen. Are you hearing me, Mama? Amen. Amen. Mama, when was your right ear? Is it your right ear was ringing? Which one is it? Is it your right ear? Sometimes it does, yes. In your right ear? Yeah, at the back. At the back, okay. Even that will stop. Amen. The spirit was trying to give you vertigo. Do you know what vertigo is? No. Vertigo is when you lose balance and the ground starts to move. Okay. Huh? You'll be free from that too, but the main thing is we need to free those. That's right. Those people. Amen. Uh -huh. Because what we were talking about is that. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. So, I want you to raise an altar of prayer. Before we pray, grab number five, triple five. It can be five billion, five hundred and something trillion. It can be fifty-five thousand five hundred. It can be five hundred and fifty-five. It can be five dollars fifty-five cents. Five nickels, whatever your five-five is, doesn't matter to me. Do it prayerfully. Do it prayerfully. Listen to me. Do it what? Prayerfully. If you don't do, if you will not pray, don't what? Do it. In our church, we believe in prayer should accompany our giving. If prayer is not involved in our giving, we should not give. Prayer must always be the anchor of our giving. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, when you give, when you fast, these things go together. Matthew chapter 6. Giving is not a pyramid scheme. When Jesus was a sacrifice on the cross, he prayed for himself. He prayed God would receive his soul. He prayed that he would be an acceptable sacrifice. He prayed. Father, your will be done. You, you want to give without praying for your offering. It doesn't work like that. Then you will say, oh, the prophets say give and nothing happens. No, it's your fault. You don't pray. And maybe other people haven't told you, but here you need to pray. Yeah. If you won't pray, save your money. Yeah. But if you will pray, God will honor your prayer with your giving. When Cornelius was giving, God says, your prayer and your giving has risen as a memorial before God. Your prayer and your givings, your prayer and your arms have risen for a memorial. Meaning that what God sees is that your sacrifice has been carried with your giving. If it's missing, you didn't do anything. Are you guys hearing me? Are you sure you can hear me? Thank you for all those who are giving and honoring God with your giving prayerfully, understanding that it is the doing of the Lord that has brought us this far. And it's only by His grace and mercy we will go far. I'm going to pray for you in this hour. Even if you're watching from home, I want you to lift your hands. If you're in here, lift your hands to the Lord. Put them like you're receiving something. This is worship. This is receiving. Put your hands in the posture of receiving. I want my King, my Lord and my God, my Savior, the King of glory, the Lord Jesus, to truly pour a blessing upon you that will rewrite the history of your family. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, 
I lift every soul that is hearing my voice. Those who are watching right now on social media and those who are present with me. And even those who will watch this days later, years later. We thank you that your power is omnipresent. There is no yesterday to you. There is no tomorrow to you. There is an only an eternal now. There is only an eternal now. My Lord and my God, your people have suffered because of the errors of those that came before them. Some were involved in the occult. Some were involved in witchcraft. Some were involved in sorcery. Some were involved in murder. Some were involved in abuses that has trickled down to this generation that is suffering without truly understanding what they did wrong in your sight. Many have cried. Many have repented, but they did not know what was done wrong. Father, the sin is not theirs. The fault is of their fathers. But you have raised them to be the ones that will destroy the yoke of the enemy over the family. That is why they are the ones who can see it, can notice that something is wrong in my family. There are patterns that are going on in my family that are wrong and they need to be corrected. Father, I condemn premature death. I condemn untimely death. I condemn witchcraft, sorcery. I condemn limitation. I condemn poverty. I condemn struggles. I condemn oppositions. I condemn unfruitfulness. I condemn stagnancy. I condemn, completely condemn barrenness. This is not the portion of your people. Today we overcome by reason of the blood of Jesus. The voice that is louder than any voice in the universe. Both spiritual and physical. Nothing is greater than the blood of Jesus. There is no greater price than the blood of Jesus. And the blood of Jesus silences every voice of opposition. Today by the voice that is in the blood of your son Jesus Lord. I silence every judgment of curses, of patterns that pour into generations. I command it in the name of Jesus to be destroyed. May they have a clean slate. Even where they erred, oh Lord, take away their error. Take away their mistakes. Don't look at their sin, but look at the cross, oh Lord. Don't deal with us according to our sin, but deal with us according to your mercy. Father, today I pray the blessing pronounced in Isaiah 61. Let it manifest on each and every one of them. 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 Manifest on every one of them. Sorrows be a thing of the past. Tears be a thing of the past. Funerals be a thing of the past. Everyone hearing my voice today, I speak as a prophet, you shall fulfill your destinies. You shall fulfill your destinies. In the mighty name of I decree and declare that the seasons of the world will no longer affect you. Amen. The economy of the world will no longer affect you. Amen. You are children of the most high God. Amen. 
you are governed by the authority and the blessing and the ordinance of heaven itself you are positioned in the right place you are hidden in Christ and in God from today you will become like a magnet you will attract every blessing that God has ordained for you without resistance blessing God has ordained with for you will come to you without resistance no I don't think I can hear you from today from today from today from today today, you will enjoy the blessing of God I want you to take 30 seconds and you are going to declare that you will not die but you shall live to experience the goodness of God upon the earth. Lift up your voice for 30 seconds. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. In the mighty name of Listen, there's a new chapter for you. There is a new chapter for you. Do you remember what we did yesterday? Fire! Ah, you are not there. Uh Fire! 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 In the name of... I want you to do it one more time with everything that is in you. Everything is done. Are you here? Fire! 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 In the name of... May God bless you. I will see you in the morning.